So you want to connect a microphone like the Rode VideoMic NTG, a Lavier microphone, or the Rode Wireless Go directly to an audio recorder like the Zoom F6, which only has XLR inputs. This is also true for all kinds of podcast recording devices. Then you need something like this. These are the Rode VXLR adapters, Rode VXLR, VXLR Plus, and VXLR Pro. There are, of course, other manufacturers than Rode. However, these are the ones that I have, so I'm going to describe the differences based on those. Now, the problem with all of these different microphones that I have here is that they connect in a very different way to a audio recorder than XLR. All of these have some form of a TRS or mini jack connector, meaning you have this little headphone jack thingy that you want to connect to the audio recorder. Usually, when you plug them directly into your camera, that's not a problem at all, because your camera will provide the necessary power for these microphones and, of course, also the connector. The thing with some of these microphones is that some need power. Others actually don't. The problem is that usually these devices right here, like the Zoom F6, they do provide something called phantom power. However, the microphones only need plug-in power. Plug-in power is about 5 volts. Phantom power is anywhere between 24 and 48 volts. And this is a very dangerous differentiation. Because if you do plug in your microphone to a outlet that provides 24 or 48 volts of power, it might work for some time. But over time, you usually end up destroying your device that you're basically powering with the vo wrong voltage. So, better not use a 48 volt power to power your microphone that only expects 5 volts. Now, these adapters right here solve that specific issue, but only two of them. This here is the Rode VXLR. It is the cheapest adapter out of the three, and that is because it only has basically cable connections from one end to the other. There's no electronics in here whatsoever, and this has a couple of effects. For one, it is pretty much the cleanest out of the three because there's absolutely nothing happening with the signal except for the plug being different on either end. However, this obviously does not solve the problem of the different voltage. So there's nothing going on with the voltage at all. This, however, is the adapter that you want to buy if you want to use it, for example, with the Rode Wireless Go. This is a microphone that actually provides its own power. It does not need phantom power at all, or plug-in power for that matter. So you can directly plug them in with the VXLR adapter, saving you a bunch of money and, of course, being able to use your microphone directly with an XLR input. Now, keep in mind one thing, though. These adapters are mono adapters, meaning you only get one signal. So if you're using the Wireless Go 2 with two transmitters and one receiver, then the signal either has to be split by a splitter cable, so a left-right splitter cable, and then you use two of these adapters, or you're mixing them together and relying on the hardware recording on the transmitter. So this covers where you want to use the VXLR. Basically, microphones that have their own power. Now, the weird thing is this case with the VideoMic NTG. This microphone actually does have its own power supply with the battery that is inbuilt. However, the plug-in power is actually used to let the microphone know whether or not it should turn on. So, in this case, you can kind of use either of these or this one. However, that is not true for all microphones that have this smart plug-in switch-off mode. For example, the DD VMic D3 Pro, I think was the name, that has the plug-in power detect as well, but you cannot change it or make it turn on by itself. So you actually have to have plug-in power, and then this adapter would not work again. So this works with the VideoMic NTG. However, it does not necessarily work with other brands. When you can turn on the microphone manually and completely, then this adapter would be totally fine. Now, this is a wholly different story with microphones like, for example, a Lavier or the Rode VideoMic Go 2, as well as the Rode Video Micro, for example. Those microphones do not turn on by themselves, they do not have a power source, and they rely heavily on the power provided by the camera or the audio recorder. And for those, then you would need a device like this. These two are the VXLR Plus and Pro. They are significantly heavier than the VXLR, and they're also way more expensive. 
They also have a nicer finish to them and a clamp in the back. However, those are not really the deciding factors here. These two, of course, solve this one issue. They do transform the 24 or 48 volts of phantom power down to a nice 5 volts of plug-in power so that your microphone turns on when it should, as well as the microphones that you're using like a lavier will actually function properly. Now, why are there two then? And that is one specific deciding factor. And that is that the VXLR Pro actually transforms the signal into a balanced audio signal, which can actually travel throughout a way, way longer distance. Specs on the website of Rode say you can basically run cables, specifically XLR cables, with a distance of up to 100 meters. Now, this is technically true for this one as well. However, you run into an issue of interference. If you're running cables that long, the cable kind of acts as an antenna and that way can pick up something from the surroundings. And you don't want that in your audio recording. This VXLR Plus adapter basically just takes the phantom power and turns it into plug-in power and you can power your microphone. And if you only use a, let's say, three meter cable and in your personal studio, then this might be totally fine and absolutely enough. If you do run on a bigger set or you do run very long cables, then the VXLR Pro is actually the one that you want to go for. To explain the difference real quick here, the thing that happens is that XLR actually runs on three prongs and a normal mono signal actually only needs two of them, which basically means ground and whatever electricity is sent as the signal. However, XLR actually is a balanced signal cable. So you can actually send the ground on one of the prongs and then use the other two to send the same signal inverted. And that's the smart part because you invert it in the transformer and then you send it through the long cable and then your receiver on the other end, like the Zoom F6, actually receives this balanced signal and then bakes it back together and by doing so will remove the interference. So that's why you can run longer cables with the VXLR Pro, which you might not necessarily get to with the VXLR Plus. However, they both solve the same problem with the phantom power and plug-in power. Now, one very important distinction between these adapters is also where you have to place them. For the VXLR, for example, of course, when you want to use it with something like the Wireless Go, you can just simply plug it straight into the audio interface or your audio recorder and then plug in your microphone to the other end. That, of course, works and it also keeps the distances very short where cables can pick up interference. Now, this doesn't necessarily work as well with the other adapters here, for example, the VXLR. You can, of course, remove the clip if I get it off and you can also plug this in straight away. However, I don't know if you're actually going to use this with the VXLR directly connected here and then you have a lavier connected there. You usually want to use some type of a cable. However, I do not recommend using cables like this. This is basically just a TRS to TRS connector. And in theory, you can use this to plug this in here and then also use the other end on, of course, your microphone. However, these cables are much more likely to pick up any interference than they are going to be picked up in the, VXL, uh, in the XLR cables. Now, with these, of course, you then would make it the other way around. You would actually use the adapter on the other end. So you'd use the adapter on the side where the microphone actually is. And then you have your XLR cable and then you connect that end to the audio recorder. This works with both of them or actually it works with all of them, but it works very well with the VXLR Plus. And for the VXLR Pro, this is actually necessary for it actually to do its thing with the balanced signal. If you don't connect it on the side where the microphone actually is, uh, so the long end of the XLR cable, if you do just plug it into here, then you're not going to have any of the effect of the balance signal whatsoever. So if you do pick up the Pro for the long distance travel for your audio signals, then make sure to plug it in on the side where the microphone is. If you just use it in your personal YouTube studio or your smaller productions, then the VXLR Plus is absolutely fine. And if you use it with powered microphones, that have nothing to do with any of the like plug-in power and all of that jazz, then you can happily pick up the VXLR. And of course, if you want to check these adapters out, I will have links to all of them as well as the microphones and the audio recorder in the description down below. And with all that said, send your audio signals to an XLR connector 
with an VXLR adapter. I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.